I'm Tommy Hollenstein. I'm a wheelchair artist. I do all these paintings with the tires of my wheelchair, and then I create sculptures as well with the uh, brushes and sticks that uh, are recycled from the studio. And aside from that, I've got a couple hobbies. I've got a service dog, and I do a lot of water skiing as well. So many things to discuss from that introduction. First, let me say thank you Tommy for sitting down with me today and having this conversation. I'm excited to meet you and I'm sure our viewers are too. I hope so. I'd like to start off our conversation by asking you, what do you think people's first impression of you is? Uh, I guess it depends on the context where I'm at, you know. Um, if I'm at an art show, I'm an artist. If I'm at the beach, and they're enjoying the sun, and enjoying the weather. Um, but people, a lot of people see my service dog and have questions about the dog. But I'm not sure about, you know, I'm not, I never thought about that. <laughs> right on. Yeah. So let's talk, since you brought up the dog a couple times, let's talk right. about your service dog. Okay. What's her name? Uh, this one's Pearl. Um, she's my third service dog from Canine Companions for Independence. Canine Companions is the, uh, oldest service dog organization out there. They've been around since 1975. And I broke my neck in 1985. I got my first dog two years later. His name was Weaver. He was a full Labrador, a full, uh, full blooded Labrador retriever male, about 90 pounds. Had him till he was 15 and a half. Got my second dog, Hiley, had her till she was 13 and a half. She was half Labrador, half golden retriever. And now we've got this beautiful little girl, Pearl, and I've had her about six years. And she just turned nine. August 23rd, Kobe Bryant's birthday. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, she's a sweetheart. Oh, she seems like a sweetheart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's a big help. She's, she gets, definitely gives me more independence. If I were to drop something, she'll pick it up, put it back in my lap. If I need somebody in the house, she'll speak and bark or whatever. And wow. Yeah, she's, she's definitely a big part of my life, for sure. That's awesome. So you said, when you were talking about the service dog, when you were talking about Pearl, that you broke your neck in 85? Yeah, it was March 10th, 1985. Had a mountain bike accident. Just a couple of miles from here in a place called uh, Castle Peak. Um, I was just out on a you know Sunday ride. It was going across the dirt lot. It was a construction lot. There was a dirt lot to build a home, a slope, a dirt lot, and a slope. When I approached the third slope, I thought, why? Well, it wasn't there. It was five and a half feet straight down. And it just caught me by surprise. All of a sudden, I, I said to myself, this is going to be a bad one. I, as soon as I landed, I hit my head. I mean, I died. I was literally up in the clouds. That looking down at my body, I saw my body laying motionless in that, that ditch. I wasn't in my body. I thought, oh my God, I'm dead. It's my time to go. And I said, God, give me another chance. You know, don't take me now. As soon as I said that, I just came right back in my body. But I was laying there completely motionless. I could move my shoulders. That was it. But I was face down, had no idea where my legs were. I thought, oh my God, I'm paralyzed. I'm still going to die. Because a lot of times, you know, your lungs fill with fluid. And I said, all right, let me be able to breathe. Whatever happens from here, I can handle. And my best friend was... One of my best friends from the time was uh, Dave. He was with me, and he was 20 yards behind me. So when he approached me, he said, hey, Dave, don't move me, don't move me. I said, you know, I broke my neck. Nah, nah, you broke your collarbone, you broke your collarbone. I said, no, nah, I'm, I'm paralyzed. I said, go hike up to a house and call the paramedics and call my parents. And my mom showed up before the paramedics did. And, uh, you know, she kind of just lost it. But, you know, I flew to Northridge Hospital, spent 19 days in intensive care, six months in rehab. I mean, but I'm blessed for my level of injury. I shouldn't be able to move my wrists, which I can. You know, I've got pretty good arm movement. You know, I've got really good control of the chair, thank God, so I can, you know, control the chair well enough to, you know, do these abstract paintings, which provides an income for me. Uh, I, I'm wearing my mask as we talk, and I know you can't see that my chin huh. is on the ground. Um, how old were you? I was 24. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I was 24. I had one day left at school. I was going to Nick Harris Detective Academy. I broke my neck on a Sunday. My final day of school was that Tuesday. I ended up graduating graduated, completed the program when I got out of the hospital. Went to work as a PI for a little bit, for like six months, but it was just doing, you know, missing persons, asset research, buying phones, just lying to people, getting all their bank information, getting information out of them. It just wasn't fluid, it wasn't, wasn't what I wanted to do. So I didn't, you know, I just phys focused on my physical therapy for the next two years. And it did a lot of physical therapy, and then I got a, a job, a part-time job, working for Science Diet, dog food, doing um, sales on the weekends and promotions and then I moved into medical sales where I was working selling medical supplies in hospitals and then I went from that to selling uh, wheelchair accessible vans for quite a few years 
and that's where I set up my first studio and started working on the paintings. You know, would would set up every night after work and do some paintings. And then when I got the house, I built a studio here and started started painting on a daily basis and got my first show in 2005. Yeah, so I've been pretty blessed ever since then. It sounds like you've been blessed since day one. Well, that's true too. <laughs> yeah, I've had a great life. Yeah, I really have. you are definitely yeah. a blessing. And I can feel that in your vibe and I can see it in your mm -hmm. face. And I can hear it in your voice when you talk about your journey. Um, what made you start painting? You know, I was an artist as a kid. I always wanted to be an artist. And I mean, they knew that in the hospital, but they were trying to teach me how to paint with a mouth stick, which is some amazing mouth stick artists out there. Johnny Erickson being one of them. She's out there in Thousand Oaks. I mean, one of my friends had one of her paintings on his wall. That, and so I knew of her, I knew of her story. But, it, but they, you know, it just wasn't fluid. You know, it was just too close to me. It was just too close to my face. And, you know, I'm used to extreme sports, mountain biking, surfing, skating, you know, doing crazy stuff. And so I didn't do anything artistically for quite a while. I did a little bit of stuff on a computer. I learned how to use the Apple computer, Santa Monica College, and did some graphic designs, did some menus, did some stuff for my dad's restaurant and whatnot. But nothing really big. And then I just, you know, one day I just said, you know, I'm going to paint with the tires of my chair. I'm going to roll through a puddle of paint, have my dog walk through a puddle and you know, go over the board together so it would remind me of all the good times we had together. And all of a sudden, wait a minute, I realized, wait a minute, God's telling me, use your tire, chair as your tire. They use your tires as your brush. And that's what I did. You know, I just started painting with a brush and perfecting a real good technique and where I can come up, you know, different things. And it's worked out, you know, it's my passion. I mean, I've, you know, I've got all these bright colors. You see these bright colors here. I mean, I just, I like working with, with color. You know, I think it's, it really speaks to people, so. I think it's awesome and that like you said the bright colors and the, the energy that it gives you like the vibe it just makes me want to like do things <laughs> right. you talked about that first painting where you put the puddle of paint out and drove through it and had the dog walk through it right. do you still have it oh yeah it's, it's hanging in my office there oh my gosh yeah it's hanging there I did two of them one's still about sitting behind me in the studio and one's been hanging on the office wall and you said uh, you had your first show in 2005 I did. I had my first solo show in 2005. That was over in Calabasas, um, which I mean, I was really blessed because I sold uh, nine paintings that night, and they started around $1,600 at that point. And Joaquin Phoenix, it was right when the movie Walk the Line came out, so he showed up and walked out with two paintings. So it got me a little notoriety. It got me in the newspaper, and that helped kind of, you know, uh, boost my name, get my name out there right away. So, and I just been working really hard at it ever since, you know. Even when the pandemic started, you know, I thank God my studio was at my house. So when we were in full lockdown, I was still able to come out here and paint on a daily basis, which really made a big difference. You know, I can't imagine the people that weren't allowed to get to their studios or weren't allowed to get to their, their, their spot of, you know, solace and, you know, do, do what they love to do. But I was still able to do that on a daily basis. And so I'm really fortunate that way. And you talked about um, people that couldn't get to their place of solace. And that is so in line with what I was about to ask you is how therapeutic is the painting for you and what type of stuff do you try to paint? I mean, it's, it's very therapeutic. I deal with a lot of physical pain. So when I'm in the, in, in the studio working on that, I'm not thinking about anything but that painting. I mean, so all of my stuff is, you know, you know from different sizes, you know, all bright colors, like I said, and they're all abstract, but you know, you know, they're, they're titled, different single word titles, you know proceed, uh, motivate, uh, different different things that are, you know, when you look at the painting, they speak to you and, you know, and, and make you think about something, make you think about a childhood dream or a memory or, yeah, and spark something in you so that, you know, maybe it'll make a change in your life. And I am sitting here looking around your studio and you're not joking, bright colors, tons of patterns, and they do all speak something different. So I uh, will have to ship some of them when we're done. That'd um, be great. So, so amazing. What piece or title was your favorite one? Do you have a favorite one? I think the, my favorite one is the one I'm working on currently. You know, it's always, always changing. I, mean, I, I do have a few favorite ones. One's called Summertime, it's in the house. It's the colors in that one and of course, the two I did with the dog, those will never go for sale. I've got another one in my bedroom. It looks like a wave, titled "Ride," reminding me of all the good times I have surfing and stuff. 
So that that there's a few that will never be for sale. Speaking of surfing, you said in your introduction you do a lot of what did you say water, water ski? skiing? Yeah. Still currently? I do. I designed a water ski for quadriplegics. About a year and a half after a year after my main injury, I started doing some water ski lessons down in San Diego. And the water ski was really designed for quadriplegics. They could hold the rope. But they had a, a rope a, a ski down there, a wood ski, but it didn't have a backrest. So man, I flew backwards and laid on my back my first round, I was looking straight up at the sky. And somebody used to literally lay in the back in the water holding the board and would drag in the water with you. And they'd have a chase boat. And then uh, then I, you know, I, first thing I did was get a water ski and I put a backrest on it so I'd have some support. And then uh, you know I would have somebody on skis, ski behind me. And then what happened was some one time, the person on the double skis behind me holding me fell off and I was still up. I look up. We just kept on going, so I realized, wait a minute, I can balance myself. And then quickly after that, I approached a friend of mine, uh, Lance Collins, from Wave Tool Surfboards, and had him make a surfboard blank that the cage could screw to. And then I redesigned the cage so that the rope would attach to the cage rather than the nose of the ski. So it's been modified many a time, trial and error, trial and error, until it got dialed in. And almost any quadruple can surf this ski, and it's, it's a lot of fun. You know, there's a, a camp out of uh, Big Bear USARC. They do adaptive water skiing, so I took one up there before. And they come down. I helped start a sports camp years ago in Long Beach, 25, 27 years ago. We didn't do it for la the last two years because of the pandemic. But for 25 years, we had been going down there, about 135 people, you know, mainly kids and some adults with uh, spinal cord injuries, different injuries, and uh, water skiing, jet skiing, kayaking, sailing, deep sea fishing in one day full contact rugby, hockey, tennis, basketball, arm cycles. Yeah, quite a few events. It's quite quite the thing. You'll have to come down and interview a few of the kids next year. I would love that yeah. invitation. Yes, That's please, fun. let me know. That would be a blessing. Absolutely. Unstoppable is what I hear from everything mm. that you're saying. You just have vision and you execute and it's amazing. What is something that would surprise people to know about you? Um, well, the water skiing usually surprises people. And a friend of mine got me a four-wheel drive chair a couple years ago, so I get to go on the beach in the sand. I go on some crazy hikes, which is, I mean, that, I mean, it got me out in the wilderness again. I go back in Sycamore Canyon down, you know, drive out to the beach, drive up the north, up north on the freeway, on the, the 101. They go to Sycamore Canyon, they go about 11 miles in. It's, I mean, I've seen bobcats back there, wild parrots, beautiful birds. I mean, it's nice just to get back there and then, you know, stop the chair and just hear the rustling of the bushes and stuff and different animals making noises. I mean, that, that that's probably one of the, you know, I mean, if I've gone some crazy hikes, I'm still a daredevil. I love that. I, I love to hear that. I yeah. am in complete awe of you. I am inspired by all that you do. And I, again, looking around as you talk to me at just all of the art, I just think that the paintings are so beautiful and the sculptures are so much fun. I, 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 I don't know. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> I just think it's so incredible. And your, um, your story is very inspiring. And it's good for people to know that there really are no limits to what you can do no matter no, what. there's not absolutely yeah i think that's amazing yeah. is there anything that you want to share that i might have missed or not touched on um before i ask you our final question of this conversation i can't think of anything now well again yeah. Thank you for inviting me into your home right. and into your studio, into your space of right. tranquility and allowing me to take in all that is here. This is, this is very, very, very wonderful. Thank you. Mm. As you are painting, as you are exhibiting, as you are water skiing, going for wheeling on your trails, um, if you could hold up a sign, this is one thing about Tommy. What would you want people to know about you? Uh, unstoppable. That'd probably be it. Yeah. 